It's getting serious. Yeah. And I can see that I'm going to die. It's going to kill me. And I have to handle this now. Right now. And since I've been in recovery, I've met so many awesome people. And it's made me feel so much less alone and resentful. And I just... It's just been helpful on many levels, as you know. Yeah. I mean, I've met all these cool people. I've learned all these cool things about myself. Yeah. I feel more connected to the world. I don't feel totally... I don't wake up in the morning and like feel like committing suicide all day, which yeah. is like a really new feeling. Yeah. I'm not on any antidepressants. I just generally wake up and I feel really good. I still have like moods. I can handle them a lot easier now. Yeah. And I have like a sponsor and I have like all the support and I know that I'm really oh, days really unbearable. I can go and I can just go rant at a group, at a meeting, and be like, yeah. I feel like fucking jumping off a bridge. Yeah. <laughs> and I really using and everyone's like, oh, it's fine, me too. <laughs> and there, you're fine, you know. So it's been really cool to have all these different communities and to be alive. Like, I didn't think I was going to make it through these paintings. Yeah. I did so many, and I went through so many dark periods. I mean, really, the last five years was pretty intense, and I was just like, I am not going to come out. You're a survivor, sure. man. I was pretty determined not to through. come out. I thought I was going to, I had this fantasy. My addict was, in mind was telling me that, like, it would be really great. If I just made so much work and just sat around and thought about what a genius I was and had hoarded it all to myself, and then when I died, that would show them. That would show the world they really missed out on what a genius I was. And then I was like, then my rational mind was like, yeah, I'd be fucking dead. So, okay. Your art would be worth more. Yeah, though. that'll be dead. But like, what's the <laughs> point, you know? And then I was like, oh, I'm listening to like the addict in me, who's like basically wants to do all this stuff to completely fuck my life. Send me a text or something, That's and awesome. if you want to come man. over, we'll make frames. I'd love um, to. And stretch canvas. A A Danny. Yep. What's your huh? What's your What's your name? I go to the stag stag meeting down. It's on 39th and Steel. It's on okay. two, on Tuesday at seven. Oh cool. 39th um, Steel. Is yeah. that at the church down there? Yep, right at the church there. Okay. It's I think a I men's to, meeting. I went to their one meeting there. They're really nice. Yeah. So, I, I prefer mean, men's meeting because I'm so narcissistic that when I go to co-ed meetings, I think that the chicks are all checking me out. Yeah. So I thought they do that to all of us guys, men's, though. Men's meetings <laughs> suit me better because it's just like, you're just here for a bunch of guys. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of randy your thing, and, yeah. and it feels better. I mean, I don't know, there's so many, the cool thing about AA or NA or any is all these there's so many programs. Yeah. So you can, yeah. Like, I my, used to do the NA gig. And then you used to do the NA thing. Yep, I used to go to NA a lot. And then I was just like, after my last relapse, I was just like, I kind of felt like when I was in the NA thing that um, and I was probably just being uh, neurotic. Yeah. But I kind of felt like a lot of people were hating on me. Yeah. You know, because uh, I ride motorcycles and they didn't really have anything. Yeah. You know, like guys that I was cool with and I fellowship with. You know, yeah. I hear later on how they had that. You know, they talk shit about me behind yeah. my back, and it's just like, I, I started going to AA, and I really like that meeting, because it's full of professionals, like there's yeah. doctors, lawyers, so check and, it and out. a couple of police officers that go there, and then everybody is just really cool, down to earth. They've all been there. Yeah. They've all been to like, what are you doing? Oh, uh, posting the pictures. Oh, you're posting. <laughs> oh, I, I know you're in the pictures. I don't have the hat. I don't have the hat to match. What are you doing over there? Yeah, it's, it's cool. I mean, when I first was getting sober, I was going to the like, lunch. I was going to the night elf meeting. Yeah. They got the elf. It's cool, but it got like really intense. I was like, I really, my nerves just can't handle this. I need like more of a small group where you just kind of chill and talk to like 10 or 15 people. And like not like a giant like bro fest. Yeah. It's cool, but it, it, I like it for what it is, but and it really helped me. Don't go to knuckleheads. Why? Because that's a, that is a dysfunctional meeting. Yeah. It's a men's meeting, but it's kind of like, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. It's like a bro fest. Okay. I like to, I like to go around to different meetings, though. I mean, it's just East nice. Side Sunrise, though, it's right down here on um, 17th and Division. It's a morning meeting. What time? It's They have one that starts at 6.30 and one that starts at 7.30. Oh, and it's, it it's a it's a pretty awesome meeting. Division Yep, Division Seventeen. There's a church right there. East, East Side Sunrise or ESSR. It's really it's really helpful. I'm really glad I discovered it. I don't you know I 
doing this, doing this, all this art stuff, getting all this art out was really triggering. I, but I didn't, and my sponsor showed up, and my friends from A showed up, and all of my friends are like, it's cool you got this. And I know, I'm not gonna drink. I've got too much invested in staying sober. And I actually, you know, it's like the thought of drinking seems really grotesque at this point. Yeah. It's just more, you know, like when you're recovering, it's just more of the, it's, it's just, we're reprogramming our brains. Yeah. And it's just getting over, it's just, it's a lot of work. It is. And you're dealing with a lot of trauma situations, and it's a lot of work because in the past you would just pour a bunch of things on top of it. Yeah. And to really be present, it's a really challenging thing. But I'm getting better at it. And I know people can help me, and I can ask for help. And I'm getting better at asking for help, which I was not doing before. Good part. And I'm just getting better at like recognizing what's going on and learning to like just engage and take breaks and chill. And like I've been surrendering a lot. It's been help the higher power that's been really helping me. Yeah. It's really stupid at first, but higher power thing has really been taking care of everything for me. Yeah. Like I have been so stressed out in the last couple of months. All these things have been happening. I just start, I go, higher power, blah, blah, to know what to do, and it's just like, boom. And when I trust in that, things work out. When I try to run it with my own brain, I see clearly what happens. Yeah. I go back into those patterns of thinking, and I don't, like I said, I don't think I'm going to start drinking again. It's just the, the, the patterns of thinking that lead to the behavior that leads to drinking. Yep. The incredible anxiety and tension, just the oh fuck everything, and everything starts, I don't know how to just feel like, I get to points where like all my thoughts are running together, and I just feel like, just fucking get me off the planet, get this little bit immediately. I can't. Uh, and that's why we do the past. So I feel like coming on and then I'm like, okay, there it comes. What do I do? And I know more what to do now. Yeah. And if I don't know what to do, I call my sponsor and I'm like, what the fuck do I do? And he's like, here's what you do. So I'm getting better doing that kind of stuff. How long have you got right now? Uh, five months now. Hell so, yeah. Um, yeah. Ross is very humorous. So he's, he's, he's really set. good. Yeah. He's always made jokes to the rest of us. He, when he put this painting up, that he said it reminded him of me because I'm German back. Yeah. And the mustache, it looks almost like Hitler. You know? Kind of, yeah. But Mark's kind of like Hitler. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, though, really. <laughs> you're totally, you're you, like you, Mercedes. You cut your mustache just in just a little yeah, bit more. I wouldn't do that, though. Cause, cause you have to reincarnate driving a Mercedes. Yeah, totally it's funny. Yeah. I bought a Mercedes four years ago, and everybody asked me if I was from Germany. Because of the mustache. But, well, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just a, a German grandparents. Born and raised here in Portland as a kid. Yeah. I've worked in background extra acting movies. He's funny. He's in Portlandia. I, I asked oh, you've been I, in Portlandia? I, I, twice, yeah. I was in the opening season premiere this year. But I am actually, people want me to do voiceover work. Can you imagine why they want me to do voiceover? I have no idea. <laughs> but people hear me speak in public places, they always ask if I work in radio. So. Yeah. You have good radio yeah, but I, I know Mark from Southeast Grind. I used to go to Southeast Grind a lot. Yeah, it's a good place. Yeah. yeah. Mark hangs out there. I used to. I don't know if he was there anymore. What's that? Southeast Grind. Oh, I was just there last night, yeah. and the night before, and you know, I run a lot of people there. I met a teacher there. She had me lecture for her classes. Yeah, I think I met you there probably, you probably a couple like, years Mark ago. Mark really? I was strung out, mm -hmm. Yeah. and he gave me like five bucks for cigarettes or something. Probably. I did? Yeah, you did. Oh, that's yeah. probably when I was still rich. I had yeah. built my own home in Troutdale uh, yeah. 20 years ago, my first wife and daughter. I lost it in the court book seven years ago. I told her one night she was going to talk to me. This happened right at the time President Obama was elected. I was really excited about the new president. But right before that, I met Hillary Clinton, which she can't be I went to the of her speech just for the heck of it. Yeah. I spoke to her briefly. I grabbed her hand and shook it. This huge crowd out of touring with girls and mothers and people. And yeah. Thousands of people pushing to get autographs. And I just grabbed her hand and pulled up real close. I said, Hey, you're beautiful. And I was serious. I thought, I thought someone should tell her that. Yeah. Just, and she just kind of bad her eyes. And I, just, and I, said, <laughs> I said, hang in there. Oregon loves you. I'm rooting for you. But, yeah. And I voted for Obama. But I think... A, <laughs> I think... Do. Yeah. And yeah, yeah I like Obama personally. I think... Yeah. I'm I pretty think happy with Obama. I think what Hillary could get elected. I think she's actually the front runner right now. Yeah, I think she would be a pretty good president. Think, thanks to Guys, Obama. i got to get home and get to bed because i got to get up at 4. That's really early. I'm Mark, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Good to see you guys. Danny. Yeah, good to meet you. Yeah, to yeah. your carpentry. Yeah, I'm a carpenter's apprentice. I tattooed for 15 years, yeah. and then that was just part of the rock star drug lifestyle for me. And I was like switching careers. Yeah. I really like building stuff with my hands. It's awesome. So I'm yeah, powerful and everything. I'm really bad at doing stuff. So yeah, come on over. I've been man. wanting to build a whole for all the new work that I want to do. I've been wanting to build a bunch of canvases. I mean, just some frames of canvas. Yeah, and they put the gesso on there. Yeah. 